Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday of Advent, we are given the figure of St. Joseph and of others. I confess to Almighty God, and, and to, to you, my, my brothers, brothers and, and sisters, sisters that, that I have, have greatly sinned, sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, 
may by His passion and cross be brought to the glory of His resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, As for a sign from the Lord your God, let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the, as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Ahaz said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he have founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place, one whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, whose desires not what is vain. shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of God of Jacob. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh but established a son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also? who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. 
to all the beloved of God in Rome called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to prepare for the coming feast of Christmas, the coming of the birth of the Messiah, our Savior, we are presented today the figure, the character, of Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph, who was, according to our gospel reading today, a righteous man. Isang taong matuwid. Isang taong banal. But let us also ask, what does the righteousness of Saint Joseph consist in. Paano nating masasabi na si San Jose ay tunay ngang matuwid at banal? In our Gospel reading today, we see the righteousness of Saint Joseph in action not just in name not just in reputation but in his action to save mary from shame and punishment we see in the gospel reading today mary was found out to be pregnant even before their formal marriage. 
And so it was shameful for Mary. And it was the right of St. Joseph to divorce her and even to bring her to court so that Mary will be punished because it was a sin for Mary to bear a child even before their marriage. But here we see St. Joseph saving Mary from the shame and punishment, deciding instead to divorce her quietly. Dito po nakita natin ang pagiging matuwid at banal ni San Jose. Hindi lamang sa kanyang pagiging malinis, kundi sa kanyang kabutihan at kagandahang loob na iligtas si Maria mula sa kahihiyan. Iligtas si Maria mula sa kaparusahan. That is the righteousness of Saint Joseph. It does not consist only in sinlessness, but in his action to save Mary from shame and punishment. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is a foreshadowing of what the Messiah will do for us, what the Savior will do for us. Jesus, our Savior, also saved us from the shame and guilt of sin. Kung paanong iniligtas ni San Jose si Maria mula sa kahihiyan, ganun din naman ang gagawid sa atin ng tagapagligtas na si Jesus. Iniligtas tayo mula sa kahihiyan at sa kaparusahan ng Kasalanan. This is the prophecy of our first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah, that the Lord will give us a sign, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Ang Panginoong Diyos mismo ay darating, magiging tao at tatawaging Immanuel, ang Diyos na kapiling natin. Ang Diyos na banal na hindi nagmamalinis, kundi dumating bilang tao, kapiling natin para iligtas tayo mula sa kasalanan. Kung paanong si San Jose ay iniligtas sa kahihiyan si Maria, ganun din naman, ililigtas tayo ni Jesus mula sa kaparusahan at kahihiyan ng kasalanan. God is with us. My dear brothers and sisters, let this be our guide this sad day. We are striving always to be righteous, to be just, to be holy. But let us learn from St. Joseph and Jesus how is it to be righteous? How is it to be holy? It is not just about sinlessness, it is about the ability to stand up for others. It is about the ability to stand in for others and save others. Habang Adviento ay gusto natin maging matuwid at banal sa harapan ng Diyos. Pero matuto sana tayo kay San Jose Paano nga ba magiging banal at matuwid? 
hindi lamang ito sa pagiging malinis, hindi lamang sa pagiging walang kasalanan, kundi sa gawain. Iligtas ang kapwa, tumindig para sa kapwa. Ngayong panahon po ng Pasko, marami akong naririnig ng mga tao na madaling humusga sa kapwa. Merong nagsasabi sa iba, nagsisimba ka lang naman kasi Pasko. Nabubuhay ka lang naman tuwing Pasko sa simbahan. Buong taon, hindi na kita makikita tuwing linggo. Madaling sabihin yan, madaling humusga ng kapwa. Pero ang tanong ko rin naman sa mga humuhusga at nagsasabi na ako ay nagsisimba tuwing linggo at kayo tuwing Pasko lang. May tanong din naman ako sa inyo. Ano ang ginawa mo para yayain ang iyong kapwa magsimba? Ano ang ginawa mo para turuan ang kapwa mo tungkol sa kahalagahan ng pagsisimba? Baka lumalabas ka rin lang tuwing Pasko para manghusga. At buong taon, wala ka namang ginawa para turuan at yayain ang kapwa makinig ng salita ng Diyos at magdiwang ng Eukaristiya. Baka ang lakas ng loob nating manghusga ng kapwa, pero wala naman tayong ginawa para sila ay akayin sa pagsisimba. Mga minamahal na kapatid, tinuturo sa atin ni San Jose at ni Jesus, ang kabanalan ay hindi lamang pagmamalinis. Ang kabanalan ay ang bumaba kapiling ng mga tao at akayin sila pabalik sa daan ni Jesus. Tingnan natin ang ating mga sarili. Ano ang kabanalan natin? Pagmamalinis lang ba? Ano ang kabanalan natin? Sasabihin lang ba natin, basta ako, nagsisimba tuwing linggo? Yan lang ba ang kabanalan mo? O mayroong kang inakay na tao, pabalik sa Diyos? Mayroon kang taong pinuntahan, Tinuruan ang kahalagahan ng salita ng Diyos, dalhin sa Kanya ang mabuting balita ng Diyos. Yan ang tunay na kabanalan. True righteousness is not just about sinlessness. It is, it is about the capacity and the ability to stand up for others and to save others. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the message of our second reading today. St. Paul, who was chosen to be an apostle, sent by God, not to become righteous himself only, but to be sent to the Gentiles, to be one with them, to proclaim the gospel to them, and to save them from punishment and the shame of sin. As we continue our celebration of the Mass, let us learn righteousness, holiness from St. Joseph and from our Messiah, Jesus. Righteousness that is not just about sinlessness, but in the capacity to stand up for others and to save others. Amen. Please all stand.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God is with us. Therefore, like Mary ever virgin, let us pray with faith and confidence, opening wide our hearts to all human needs. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may ever provide pastoral care for people on different pilgrimages of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christmas may bring a lasting peace among nations, especially those involved in a conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people busily preparing for Christmas may still find the God who is with us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That amidst the feasting and exchange of gifts, we will not forget the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers of Our Lady and Saint Joseph may help the faithful departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Come, Lord God, in the power of your love. Through our prayers for others, remove any obstacle preventing us from going to meet Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as He filled with His power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold Him, the Virgin Mother longed for Him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of His coming and proclaimed His presence when He came. It is by His gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of His Nativity, so that He may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in His praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of Your glory as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, for when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next Sunday is already Christmas Day. The Mass is here at the Manila Cathedral on December 25. Christmas Day will be at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. All of our celebrations will, of course, be broadcasted online for those who are not able to come to church. But we invite everyone, especially on this great feast of the birth of our Savior, for all of us to come home and to come to church so that we could receive the Eucharist on the great feast of our Savior. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing now and forever. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.